All right, so I did have something else entirely planned for today, and then all my footage of it got corrupted. And now I have to start it over again. So, in the interest of getting some content at all out this week, which has been a very weird week for me, I decided to slap this together instead. This is the pilot for a new series that I have been considering for a while, honestly, and the fact that I've been watching my sister's kids lately has given me an excuse to finally put it together, that I'm going to be calling, tentatively at least, Kids These Days. It's a series of reviews of things that are popular with kids these days, whether those things be new, whether they be online, whether they be TV shows, whether they be old TV shows that are being repopularized by things like Disney Plus and Netflix, and frankly, for the pilot of this show, I couldn't come up with anything better than one of my nephew's favorite shows, which I guess just recently made its way onto Netflix. I'm not really sure how long this has been on Netflix, but apparently people are just recently kind of starting to rediscover it. Kids are. Anyway, uh, it's a little gem called Dinosaur King. Dinosaur King is a mid-2000s for kids anime dub, and yes, I'm going to be talking about the dub here. I have no knowledge whatsoever of the Japanese version of this anime. And frankly, I don't care, because while I think I might get a little bit of enjoyment out of this show based on what I've seen of the dub if I watched it in the Japanese, just because it, it has similarities to some stuff I watched as a kid. But the fact that this dub is a four kids anime dub means that it's just injected to the brim with that trademark four kids goodness. Every single glorious four kids trope is present in this anime, from reusing the same voice actors from all of their other projects to just straight up aping things that were popular at the time. I think the most grievous example of them just reusing voice actors is when it comes to this trio here of very Team Rocket-esque characters. Like, yeah, one of them isn't an instance of this world's collectible monster that can talk, but there's still three of them. And this woman here is, is just, she's so jesty that it hurts. She's literally voiced by the same person. Could I speak to the person in charge? It's important. <laughs> you twerps can eat as much as you want as soon as you hand over those Pokemon. Uh, the taller guy has a voice which sounds very much like the voice of James from Pokemon, though from what I can tell he's not voiced by any of the people who have voiced James from Pokemon, which I thought was interesting. I could have sworn he was. And the shorter guy has a funny accent, like Meowth does. And these three have literally the same dynamic as Jesse, James, and Meowth in Pokemon. Renting this robot was a really good idea. Glad I thought of it. And stuff like that, if it was limited to stuff like that, I could assume that all of the similarities between this and other 4Kids adaptations were the fault of 4Kids. Like, like, listen, just listen to these bits from the openings. King is what you wanna be, yeah. I wanna be the very best. Hey. Clearly, they were trying to ape from their other properties, including Yu-Gi-Oh, since this show does involve cards, collectible cards. But then there are similarities that stem directly from the source material. Like, you can't, you can't dismiss this. The main character is basically just Ash. He's a plucky go-getter with a be-the-best mentality. He travels around with his two friends, working together with them to accomplish their goals, coming against the trio that I pointed out earlier, defeating them on the regular, sometimes in very humiliating ways for the villains. He has a cute partner mascot creature that follows him around and does cute things to appeal to children. He even has an older mentor guy who sometimes helps him out, but not really, who knows more about the subject of the franchise than he himself does. Though, to be fair, the main character of this show, I think his name is Max? Is that right? I don't even remember. His mentor character is his dad, whereas Professor Oak isn't Ash's dad, allegedly. The show itself focuses around 
the main character and his two friends traveling around the world to different places, though those places factor so little into the stories of the episodes that they might as well just be traveling around their own hometown, frankly. Trying to beat the villainous Alpha Gang, led by Dr. Z, though we rarely see Dr. Z, to various dinosaurs that have appeared, because I guess Dr. Z comes from the future, where they have resurrected dinosaurs as cards, and in his attempt to take over the world by transforming it into a giant dinosaur arena or something, I could barely follow the villain's plan, so please excuse me if I'm getting it horribly wrong. Anyway, he came back to the past. His time machine exploded, trapping him and all of his allies in, in the present of like 2005 or whatever, and scattering his dinosaur cards to the wind, and now they're resurrecting as actual dinosaurs, and our heroes must use the dinosaurs that they have befriended and learned to fight with to defeat these other dinosaurs, transforming them back into the small, carryable version of them that's also handily collectible, so that they can build their collection of dinosaurs to use them in further battles against the villains. It's so Pokemon that it hurts. And yet there are things that are drawn straight from other popular things at the time, such as Digimon and Yu-Gi-Oh! The dinosaurs literally have smaller and cuter forms, and then larger and fiercer forms that they can switch between practically at will, and then they can even evolve further past those. In the trademark for the era, long, drawn-out transformation sequences, which, of course, like in Digimon, involve the main character holding a small digital device. But then that small digital device, which does eventually become wrist-mounted, because of course it does, accepts inputs from the dinosaur cards, because of course there's also like dinosaur attack cards and stuff that allow the dinosaurs to do more impressive things, which is clearly a Yu-Gi-Oh reference. And this is all stuff that was in the source material. Obviously somebody just decided one day to take everything that was popular with boys and pile it into one anime. And I couldn't love this more for that. To be fair to Dinosaur King, though, what little research I actually did on the anime uh, has led me to discover that it's based on a couple of games that came first. There was one of those card arcade games in Japan, which was then later adapted into a Nintendo DS game, which I guess was pretty popular, because there's like, there's like actual gameplay of it on YouTube and stuff. And I had never heard of either of these things. I had never even heard of the anime until my nephew started watching it. But apparently it was a thing, I guess, at least for a little while. And I guess the fact that it was a, a pretty poorly animated CG card battle game in an arcade first is why the dinosaurs are all terribly rendered, terribly composited CG models whenever they grow to big size and start to fight each other. It's just, it's so laughably, disgustingly awful that I can't help but laugh at it every time I see it. It's it's so ridiculous. This is the purest example of a so bad it's good anime that I have ever seen. And it's also uncomfortably close in concept and structure to so many things that I like that I am on the verge of having an existential crisis as I slowly realize that the things I liked as a kid weren't nearly as cool as I thought they were. I legit can't get enough of this show. Now, that said, I don't watch it very seriously. I put it on in the background when I'm doing other stuff, but I have been watching this show. And if you're someone who has nostalgic feelings for some of the same stuff that I do, stuff that I've mentioned in this review, I would recommend that you do too. Especially if you have some kids who like dinosaurs and might like to play dinosaurs chasing each other around the house, as my nephews do, because you will get a kick out of this show for different reasons than they will, but your kids will get a kick out of this show too. Because this is just... It's so perfectly designed to worm its way into kids' brains and trigger all those little pleasure responses that things like Digimon and Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon did for us. They can't help liking it, right? And yet, at the same time, it's pretty freaking harmless. There's not even any Dinosaur King products anymore for you to have to worry about buying for your kids. Just buy them some cheap plastic dinosaurs that have roughly the same general appearance as the shitty CGI in the show, 
and you're golden. All in all, I think that watching this show on Netflix with your kids would be an all-around pretty freaking enjoyable time for everyone involved. Now, there is something pretty glaring that this show is lacking that you may find pretty glaringly lacking if you are someone who likes Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! And that's the fact that these kids are legitimately trying to save the world. It's more of a Digimon kind of thing than a Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh! kind of thing. They have a mission and they're trying to complete it. There is no background gym challenge or card game tournament that acts as a framework for the battles that they're having, at least not as far as I know. Maybe dinosaur versus dinosaur competitions become a thing later on if they do. I'm not there yet. So if you're someone who likes that kind of framework, if you're the kind of person who likes when their shonen nonsense is framed within a tournament arc style thing, that might annoy you a little bit, but I never really felt like it was a problem. Because again, I'm laughing at this show. I'm not watching it for the substance. Though if we are talking about substance, it does do a halfway decent job of allowing the main character's two friends to actually get a legitimate amount of stuff done. They aren't dead weight most of the time, like the second and third members of a lot of anime trios tend to be, which is pretty nice. All in all, I don't really have anything else to say about Dinosaur King. If any of you guys are a fan, uh, please let me know in the comments and gush about why you are. Even if it is just the same kind of stuff I've been talking about, even if you just watch it ironically. Because I, I legitimately love this show and just want to talk about it with people. By God, I've never encountered something that was more perfectly so bad it's good for me personally than this. As per usual though, just in general, if you guys have seen Dinosaur King, even if just recently on Netflix with your own kids. What did you think of it? Let's get a discussion going in the comment section down below. And also, I wouldn't mind hearing what you thought of the idea for this series, because I'm actually really liking it. I think I might actually try to get another one of these up next week if I can. Either way, though, this has been AJ22, and I will talk to you guys later.